So usually here in this layers window, we have been always been working with layers, right? That's by default what is always available here. But also there's a tab called as channels. Okay, let's look at this. If I open this up, this shows you a couple of different channels in the form, kind of you can think of them like different layers. Okay, and what do you see? Red, green, blue, which are your primary colors. And when you combine these colors, that's what forms your colored image. But if we just click individually on these, okay, it's gonna show you the tonal variation according to only the color that you've selected. So how much of reds are there in this image? Okay, so you can see, right? Wherever you see, you know, most of the white stuff, okay? The lighter stuff that has the reddish tonalities, okay? Uh, if we select green, you can see the greens are gonna change, okay? And if you see the blues, you're gonna see this, okay? Because obviously blues usually will give you the maximum contrast in landscape images because the sky usually has more of the blue, okay? Now, in order for channel-based selections to work, what you have to do is go through the three of them just like we did and notice which one gives you the maximum contrast between the subject and what you're trying to replace. So let's go through this again. Red, does this, yeah, the contrast is definitely there, right? You can see the trees are dark and this is sky, but is it as much as green? No, green definitely improved the contrast, right? It made whiter things whiter and darker things darker. That means the contrast improved, okay? But just see for blue, and that's usually gonna be the one that we will be selecting for landscape images. It's gonna give you the maximum contrast. Now can you see the sky is like as white as possible. That's what you're trying to achieve. The maximum difference between things you wanna keep and things you wanna replace. Once you have identified which channel is giving you the maximum contrast, now we'll be actually using this particular channel to create our layer mask or basically to create our selection because if you look at this, what does it look like? Doesn't it start to look like a layer mask where whatever is in white will be selected and whatever is in black will not be selected. Just see what happens if I hold down control or command just like we do on a layer mask and if I just click on this. So I'm holding down control command and just see. The same thing happens what happened when we actually have a proper layer mask like we've been seeing. Doesn't it show you the marching ants or the selection? Anything here that was in white has been selected. And we can easily inverse this selection to select things which are black by going to select and inverse just like we've been doing before. The only issue right now is that because there were also a lot of blues in the foreground and the background, this also is white in a lot of areas or light in a lot of areas. That means this also is a part of the selection. So we have on our hands a very simple task. If we want to turn this selection into, a, uh, or rather this channel into an accurate selection, all we have to do is any area that we do want to keep, okay? We simply, in this case, we just turn that black. So we can just simply paint everything in the foreground and the middle ground black. And the best part is this hard part of the tree which even the automated tool could not get. Can you see if I zoom in, we already have this nailed down because of the selection. It is even got this because of the contrast. So we literally just have to paint this black so that then the only part that will remain white is the sky, which we'll be easily able to then control command click and make a selection and open it up as a layer mask. So that's how channels work. If you're getting confused, don't worry. Once we actually do this process, you will understand how everything works. But this is the concept, that you select a channel which gives you the maximum contrast. Sometimes it can also be red and green, by the way, if you're doing it on a portrait image or some other kind of image, okay? Figure it out and then what are the steps that you have to take? Let's find out. So how we will proceed with this method is very, very simple, okay? All we have to do is, first of all, the golden principle is you never work on the original channel because what we have to do is we have to actually manipulate this channel and start painting black on it, okay? To cover everything that we eventually wanna keep, okay? So you don't work on blue where it is blue. It's always, not, I'm not even saying a better idea, you have to do this, otherwise it will harm the original image because 
RGB, if I click on this, this is what forms your colored image. It is taking into account this blue. You do any changes here, it's gonna reflect in your original image. So we don't wanna to touch the blue, okay? It's just for identifying. What we wanna do here is, we wanna right click and click on duplicate channel. Okay, so it's gonna create blue copy, that is fine. And now, we just have to make sure that this is selected. Right now it's selected, but the eye icon is not appearing here. So what you have to do in order to get this eye icon is just click RGB once again, okay? And then once more, you click here. That's how we know that yes. Now everything has been deselected from RGB, the original ones. We are now gonna start working on only this duplicate channel so that we don't harm the original image in any way. So I'm gonna zoom in, and now I have a very simple task, which is I can start, so I can do a lot of things here, by the way, okay? I can, if I felt the contrast still needed to be improved more, okay? I can always, with this layer selected, go to Image, Adjustments, okay? And I can open up the Levels Adjustment, just like we've been doing before. I can further raise this contrast because this kind of still appears to be like 90% uh, white, but not fully white, right? And if you ever want to verify that, you always have the palette with you. If just, let me just close this for some time. If you ever want to verify whether something is white or not, you can always take this palette. You have, get this eyedropper, just click here. Can you see it's not reaching fully here? This top part is white. Whenever it's gonna be fully white, you're gonna see the values of RGB as 255, 255, and 255, just see, like this. If it's below that, okay, something like this, don't worry about the other values, they also serve a purpose, but just keep it on the primary colors of focus, okay? If you've seen something like this, slightly lesser than white. Similarly, black is 0, 0, 0. Okay, so these things are, to be frank, more important in things like product photography, we are trying to make something absolutely RGB technically white, uh, if you are interested in all that, do check out my product photography course also. But in these situations also, it can be helpful that do I want to use levels or not? Uh, it can definitely help you. Not saying that you can't go straight away ahead with this, but kind of helps if you just increase the contrast more. So we can go to image, adjustments, levels, just turn this, because the black parts are okay. We're mainly concentrating on the tree, because this part we'll be manually painting, okay, into black. So. Yes, can do something like this. Can you see? Now it kind of becomes yeah, like a proper white. But of course, you don't want to push it so much that it starts to take away from the tree, the black things. It will impact your selection otherwise. Just a bit, okay? Like this. That's it. And now it'll definitely improve it. So if I see the palette now, if I click somewhere here, you see like, yeah, very, very close to 255. And it's okay. It doesn't have to be 255, but as close to as possible to white without harming this. And for this part, because we know we want to keep this, so we can just turn this black, okay? You'll have to inverse things, okay? Because right now we're painting it black, but we'll inverse it because ultimately this is what we want to remove. Don't worry, it can be confusing. You'll understand, basically we're just creating a mask. Once you get either of the things right, this is black or this is white or this is black or this is white, you can always just click on inverse and it does the opposite, okay? So don't worry about that. So we're going to take our brush and just gonna can we even increase the size here and simply just paint black here. Okay. I want to turn pressure sensitivity sensitivity off, okay, because I don't need it here. And to be frank, I don't even need the brush. I can just like take a selection tool and fill the thing with black, but it's okay. It's not that much. And now this part is slightly tricky, okay, because this is kind of 50% gray. Okay, so what we can do here is once we reach this part here we can simply turn our flow down to something less. Something like this. Now this can be done in better ways because we have something called as a gradient tool here. Like I said, I want to keep things simple. If you understand the concept, then later on you'll be able to use different tools. Because if I put in too many tools right now, it'll just confuse you. Now we've got something like this. This is the time to explain you why this is going to be a layer mask. So once we have something like this, now this is on blue copy. So the good part is we've not affected our original image. Now if I hold down control or command and click on this, you see, we get this. Any part that is white, now it has been selected. Okay? Now if I go back with to my layers, okay, and we have this particular thing, our selection is still active. You can see the marching ants. Now if we open up a layer mask, just see what happens. Anything that was selected, it basically turned it into white, 
and we got black. Basically what we painted, right? That's what exactly what we've got. But if you actually think of it, this was the point I was trying to make. We want to do the opposite, right? We we want this to be replaced. That means the, the onion skin should be here and the other parts that we want to keep should be here, right? But because it was easier to paint that way on the channel, it's okay if we get this right now because now it's very easy. Once I have my mask selected, you can, you know, just double click your uh, mask. You're going to get these properties here. And then inside these properties, you get invert. So if I invert this mask, white will become black. Black will become white. So if I do this, just keep an eye on this. And boom, we have pretty much achieved our objective. Got a fantastic selection. We know for sure this time those branches have not been excluded and we did not even have to go inside select and mask. Now we're left with a very simple task which is to get our brand new sky and to put it here. So let's do that. So I've given you this image also. You can pretty much choose any sky for this. Okay. So I'm going to just drag this out and drag it here. Now it's up to me. First of all, this is going to be on top. We're of course going to put it down, but let's at least get the placement right and the size right. So I'm going to hit Control T, Command T to transform this. And let's say something like this. And I don't mind if it's big because I also later on, okay, I want to put a bit of the sky in the reflection in the water in the foreground. Okay, so I don't mind if it kind of covers the whole thing. So maybe something like this. Okay, and now, all we have to do is first of all put this down. Now whenever you do this, you can see right, straight away, this is good. Now whenever you do this, especially if you're doing it in images which obviously where the timing is not matching, this straight away looks like a golden hour type of an image. This pretty much looks like an afternoon kind of an image. Okay, or at least definitely not close to the golden hour because the water is too blue for it. Okay, so this kind of is not ma matching. So one way obviously is that think more about it. Okay, you've got to put a lot of thought about you know, the kind of sky and the timing of the foreground. Okay, so that is your decision, right? That's not got to do with editing. But in these cases, if you feel it's not matching too well, a good practice is to just decrease the opacity of this particular layer. So we can always turn the opacity down. Now in this case, it's going to look slightly bad, okay? Because we have the onion skin down below. So usually what I like to do in this case is just, because we worked on the original, what we can do is just duplicate this layer. So here is duplicate layer. Okay, it's going to make a copy along with the mask. Don't worry about it. Just put it down and just delete the mask. Okay, so we can just right click and just delete this layer. Basically, kind of think of it like this, that we didn't work on the original and our original is here. And then what happens now is that we're kind of seeing like a blend of what we had here. Okay, like this background. Okay, which is usually going to be very bright, right? Okay. And a bit here. So now when I decrease the opacity of this layer, okay, so you see this is the new sky, kind of we're taking a bit of that and a bit of this. So even in these situations where they were clicked at different times, this is one way to kind of make it look more realistic that yeah, okay, we're not going for the full sky, we're going for a bit of it. Okay. Now, if you want to go way more advanced into this process and actually want to do it for the proper skies, it will involve changing, feathering some selection and doing all those things if you don't, if you want to use a full opacity. Okay. I do have a separate course, like a, almost a four hour long course called Landscape Editing for Beginners. Okay. Do check that course out also. That's completely only about landscape editing. I also have a landscape photography course, which is about shooting uh, landscapes that also has a bit of part on editing. So we've got these couple of courses, check them out. But here I'm, my idea is to just give you a preview when it comes to these selections, okay? Uh, finally, I think this looks good. The only thing I want to do here is that I want to add a bit of this on to the reflection here, okay? So what we can do here is the easiest way if you don't want to be too accurate about things, okay? So I'll, I'll show you the uh, scientifically accurate way or if you just want to be subtle about it then the easiest way is just select your mask okay remember again if you see the alt thing you basically just if you think of it we just have to kind of paint a bit of black not like a full black but kind of a grayish black hair just so that we get that hint of reflection that kind of means that basically black reveals right in a layer mask we're just revealing a bit of it and the sky will be seen through it so that can be the easiest way even though Ideally speaking, the reflection should be like opposite, right? But just see, it's going to be so subtle that it's not going to be noticeable. So the easiest way is this. You take a brush, 
make sure black is selected, really decrease your flow, okay, to something like even 9%. Make sure you are on the layer mask. Let me just zoom in, okay, and you basically just make sure this is soft edged, okay, we don't want to see any hard edges on the brush. And you can simply start to just slowly paint this like this, okay. You start to see, or basically, can you see like we're seeing that, but in a very subtle way, that's how a reflection is going to be. But that is because, okay, this is appearing, none of this is actually here. No, because what we are doing, if I hide this, we just have here, if I increase the opacity, this is the sky. That's what we're revealing. So this obviously is not accurate, right? That's because the reflection will be from this. So if you want to be accurate about things, it's just slightly more uh, tougher. So I'm going to just press undo till I get back to this part. All we have to do is we have to flip, first of all, this sky vertically, like it should be opposite here. So how do we do that? Remember, we already have our selection. So we can take the advantage of that if I hold down control click, let's go back to the selection by clicking on the layer mask, control command click. And if I go to select, if I go to inverse, we basically can anytime select our sky, right? It's within our hands now. Now what we can do is, we can just, we want to flip this sky, right? We want to, we got the selection, but we just want to flip this sky vertically. So how do we do that? Right now, I need to copy and paste this sky on a separate layer. But right now it won't happen because the sky is not on this layer. We just use this layer to get the selection. That's because the layer mask is here. But the sky is not on this layer. Where are the details of the sky? On this layer, right? So once I have got my selection, after that make sure you select this layer and then you do Control C and Command C. That is, or Command, uh, Control C, Command V or <laughs> you know, Command C and Command V. I've, I hope I've got that right, a bit confused, but basically for uh, Mac and Windows is gonna be different, but copy and paste. So just see, I'm on a window, so Control C. So it's got the selection, but from this layer, because we've selected this, and if I hit Control V, just see what happens here. It kind of makes a new layer here, right? Like this, okay? Then what we can do is just kind of adjust its position. Don't have to be too accurate so that, yeah, we know that it's right there. And then, with this new layer selected, okay, we can go to edit, we can go to transform, and we can say flip vertically. So it's gonna make it opposite. And then we can just push this down here. Okay, and then what we can do here is, so I'm gonna push it slightly even more down so it's not seen here, okay? So again, we're facing that same issue. If you click, it moves something else. So make sure this is selected, this is the new layer and I'm holding down control command, make sure this totally goes down basically, okay? It's completely like behind this thing. We know that, yeah, it's somewhere here. And now we can go over to this layer mask and simply do the same thing that we did again. It's the same thing, but it's just that now this is gonna be technically more accurate because it's gonna be like a reflection, okay? And now I can take a low flow brush and just start painting it. So this time, yeah, we're actually seeing those clouds being reflected back here. Something like this. And yeah, I think that really looked good, right? Without this, you know, it just wasn't looking too great. And ideally speaking, okay, when I'm doing this, can you see, we still have that reflection that is coming from the original sky. So ideally speaking, before you do this, or even right now, what we can do is, just so that this is not reflected in the reflection, okay? Because remember, our original sky was up till here, right? Because in initially we were planning to put the reflection here. So what can we do here? Little homework for you, it's just gonna take two seconds. We simply open up its own layer mask and we just paint black there so that the original layer is not seen. Like this, for sure, at least on this area. Now, you can see the black is here, so this is, the reflection is only coming from this new layer that we had selected, not from this other layer, okay? So yeah, sometimes things can involve a bit of steps, but the main thing you should just understand is the whole process. But my whole idea about teaching this was that any time, whether it's a portrait image, an image of a pet, or anything where you have good amount of contrast, select and mask is not your only option. You can even use a channel-based selection very, very easily. All right, so we're gonna keep learning more. I hope you like this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye for now.